The mighty German ME262 fighter jet is one of the most well-known and recognizable vehicles developed in World War II. It being a revolutionary idea and, if not for Germany being beyond saving at the time of its introduction, the jet may have posed a serious threat to the Allied forces who would have needed to engage this borderline futuristic fighter in the skies. Knowing of this craft, Japanese engineers wanted a piece for themselves. Japan's interest in jet aircraft increased in September 1944 when the Japanese air attaché in Berlin sent a large number of detailed reports on the German Messerschmitt ME262 fighter program. The Nakajima Kitsuka, or Kika, in English, Orange Blossom, was Japan's first jet aircraft. The Kika had a wingspan of 10 meters, a length of 8.125 meters, and a height of 2.95 meters. It being essentially a smaller scaled down version of the ME262, you would maybe expect it to perform nearly the same as its German counterpart. But, in reality, it had a few issues, one of which being the development of engines in Japan was severely lacking. There were many tries at creating propulsion for the craft. These attempts to build a true turbojet engine eventually led to the development of the TR-10, a small engine with a single-stage centrifugal compressor with a single-stage turbine. This was tested in the summer of 1943. Weighing only 250 kilograms, the engine was the first step to build an aircraft powered by jet engines in Japan. Soon the engine was modified, and with certain changes it was named the NE-12B. This engine was the best the Japanese constructors could achieve at the time. Eventually, the Japanese realized that without the necessary technological boost to overcome the problems with low thrust and lack of experience, the task would not be easy, if possible at all. In May 1944, the Japanese negotiated manufacturing rights to the Messerschmitt ME-262, and examples of Junkers Jumo 004 and BMW 003 turbojets. However, the Japanese submarine I-29 was sunk by U.S. submarines after leaving Singapore while carrying engines and one ME-262 example. Soon after the sinking, engineers and laborers began to toil day and night to build the NE-20, which was believed to be the most closely replicated version of the Jumo 004 that could be produced. On March 26, 1945, the first NE-20 engine was successfully tested in a cave set into a cliff in Yokosuka. Finally, an engine efficient enough for a practical use had been developed by Japan. The development of the Kitsuka airframe started on the 14th of September 1944, when Imperial Japanese Navy representatives met with Nakajima at the Koizumi plant to discuss concepts and ideas. These ideas were put into practice in January 1945, when a wooden mock-up was ready for first inspection by Vice Admiral Misawa Wada. Firstly, the aircraft was supposed to be powered by the NE-12B engines, but soon it became obvious that the NE-20 engine outperformed it and was substantially a better design. Soon, changes were made, and by the end of March, the Kitsuka program entered its final stage. The first fuselage was complete on the 25th of April 1945 and stress-tested. An aircraft without engines was completed by the 25th of June and prepared for testing. The fuselage was disassembled, loaded into trucks, and moved to the Nakajima Koizumi plant where two NE-20 engines were waiting. On the 27th of June, the aircraft was finally completed and declared as ready for testing. First testing of both engines on the aircraft took place on the 30th of June, although full testing could not be conducted due to restrictions of the runway. The aircraft had to be moved. Eventually, the airfield at Kizaru Air Base was chosen to be a place where the first Japanese jet aircraft would take off. The aircraft was prepared for tests at the end of July, and on the 27th, Lt. Wada conducted some successful taxiing tests. The final day was the 7th of August, the day after the Hiroshima bombing. It was an excellent morning with a 24 km per hour southwest wind, giving a crosswind blowing from the right across runway 20, pointing towards Tokyo Bay. The Kiko was only partially loaded with fuel to keep weight below 3,150 kilograms, which allowed 16 minutes of flight. A special guest, Lt. Commander Sasumu Takaoka, who was an experienced test pilot, climbed into the cockpit and prepared the machine for takeoff. On his mark, both NE-20 engines were started, and as soon as he was taxiing to the start of the runway, he lowered flaps to 20 degrees and gradually increased the throttle to reach 11,000 RPM. Then he released the brakes and the Kitsuka began to roll. No more than 25 seconds later, the first Japanese aircraft propelled by jet engines was airborne. When Takaoka climbed to 610 meters in altitude, he leveled off and conducted the test, which was carried out under strict restrictions not to exceed 314 kilometers per hour and retract the landing gear. Observing the instruments in the cockpit, he noted all of the important statistics and figures to give feedback to technicians and ground crew. 
In case of engine failure, he circled over Kisazaru airfield. He also had to constantly throttle back to keep from exceeding the speed limit. A brief test of control sensitivity showed that rudder was rather stiff. Ailerons were heavy, but working, and elevators were overly responsive. After completing the test, Takaoka chose a long and shallow drop, extending the flaps to 40 degrees, and brought the turbojets to 7,000 RPM. On touchdown, he only needed moderate braking to bring Kitsuka to a stop. Using only 600 meters of runway, he brought the machine to the ramp amid crowds of cheering spectators and ground crews. The total flight time was around 11 minutes, and after reporting, Takaoka stated he experienced no problems with the engines and submitted his recommendations for improving the machine. This short flight was a symbolic event bringing Japan into the jet era. Despite the dire situation Japan found herself in at that stage of the war, and both technological and material deficiencies, the Japanese managed to build a jet engine and eventually a successful tested jet-powered aircraft. A ceremonial official initial test flight was made on the 11th of August, four days later. For this flight, rocket-assisted takeoff, or RATO, units were fitted to the aircraft. However, because their alignment had been miscalculated, the acceleration was so heavy that the nose of the aircraft came up and the tail went down and skidded along the runway. As a result, the aircraft did not take off at all and was damaged when it ran off the end of the runway. Before it could be repaired, Japan had surrendered and the war was over, leaving the only jet actually used in combat by the Japanese to be the Oka, a rocket-propelled and human-piloted kamikaze. If you would like to see a video on that project, just let me know. So how did the Kika compare to the ME-262s that worried the Allied Air Forces in 1944-45? The ME-262A1A had a top speed of 540 miles per hour, which left in the dust American pilots flying P-51D Mustangs with a maximum speed of 437 miles per hour. Plans for the interceptor version of the Kika called for a maximum speed of 443 miles per hour. In other words, its maximum speed was about the same as a Mustang, and the early jets of World War II were neither known for maneuverability or engine reliability. The most intriguing question, of course, is whether Japanese jets could have changed the outcome of the Pacific War had they been fielded in time. The best answer is to look at what happened to Germany which actually produced 1,400 ME-262s, some of which saw combat between November 1944 and May 1945. Though quite disturbing to the Allies, the jets didn't save the Third Reich. There were too many Allied aircraft, the Anglo-American Air Forces mounted standing patrols over airfields to catch the ME-262 during their vulnerable takeoff and landing runs, and Nazi Germany was being overrun by Allied tanks. With an even worse fuel and raw materials situation than Germany, Japan would have fared no better. The Kika would have been overwhelmed by the massive U.S. land-based and carrier-based formations that roamed over Japan in the last days of the war. If it had been fielded earlier, perhaps it could have made some difference over battlefields, such as the 1944 U.S. invasion of the Philippines, yet even there the Kika's short range would have rendered it unsuitable for the long-distance flying that characterized the Pacific War. The Kika might have been regulated to a defensive role over the home islands, intercepting daytime B-29 raids, except the Americans eventually switched the B-29s from day raids to night, when the radarless Kika could not fly, proving that as most sources like to say, the Nakajima Kika was too little, too late. What do you think of the Nakajima Kika? Do you think it would have been an effective interceptor? Or do you think it would even help Japan at all? Let me know in the comments, and I hope you enjoyed this video. On screen you will see a playlist for more aviation videos like this one. Also, a more recent video from my channel. If you feel like it, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.